Hello everyone, I'm Ethan, the founder of Outcast Games. Unreal Engine 5 Early Access is here, and with it, Nanite, a new technology which allows for truly virtualized geometry. Unlimited detail is here. Unreal Engine 5 is capable of rendering geometry that is orders of magnitude more complex than the geometry that can be rendered in Unreal Engine 4. Frame budgets are no longer constrained by pally counts, draw calls, and mesh memory usage. Unreal Engine 5 is capable of rendering film quality 3D models in real time. Furthermore, the laborious, time consuming task of manually authoring LODs for your meshes is a thing of the past. Nanite works in real time to reconstruct meshes frame by frame so that a triangle is never smaller than a pixel on the screen. However, there are some limits to what Nanite can do triangle counts instances per mesh, material complexity, and output resolution should all be optimized for various hardware and software configurations. Epic has stated they will continue to improve Nanite's performance throughout future updates of the Unreal Engine. To enable Nanite on a static mesh, skeletal meshes aren't yet supported unfortunately, though it is on Epic's list of things to do. You simply tick a box in the details panel for the mesh upon import or through batch selection in the content browser. Virtual textures are not required to be used with Nanite, however, Epic does recommend using them. Virtual textures are an Unreal Engine feature with similar goals to texture data that Nanite achieves with mesh data. Upon import, meshes are analyzed and broken down into hierarchical clusters of triangle groups. During rendering, these clusters are swapped on the fly at varying levels of detail. Epic has worked hard to ensure that these clusters will connect perfectly without cracks or seams. Only visible data is rendered and stored in memory. Nanite even runs its own rendering pass that completely bypasses traditional rendering calls. According to Epic Games, Nanite should be enabled wherever and whenever possible. Any static mesh that has it enabled will typically render faster and take up less memory. A mesh is considered to be a good mesh for Nanite if it has many triangles, small triangles, or many instances, or if it occludes other Nanite meshes on the screen. Static meshes, instant static meshes, hierarchical instant static meshes, and geometry collections are all supported by Nanite but deformation is not yet supported. Deformation is something like uh, animated meshes, um, your characters, morph targets, splines, um, all of that isn't supported yet. But Epic is working to get deformation supported by Nanite in the future. Static meshes that are using Nanite have additional options which can be found in the details panel inside of the mesh editor. Position precision changes how Nanite quantizes mesh vertex data to maximize memory density and minimize disk footprint. The auto precision setting lets Nanite choose the best precision for any given mesh or situation. Nanite also generates a proxy mesh, which is given to the vertex buffer when it requires information about Nanite meshes. This proxy mesh does not have as much detail as the Nanite mesh, at least by default, because usually that amount of detail isn't needed. The proxy mesh is used for things such as complex collision, where using the full detail of a nanite mesh would just be wasteful. To influence how this proxy mesh is created, you can edit the triangle position precision setting. The setting is on a scale of 0 to 100, 100% being 100% the detail of the original nanite mesh. The minimum triangle count of a proxy mesh is 2,000 triangles, so even if it's set to zero, which is the default value, your proxy mesh will be 2,000 triangles. If your nanite mesh has 2,000 triangles or less, the proxy mesh will always be the full resolution nanite mesh. Whew, okay, that was a lot of information to get through. Nanite really is an amazing piece of technology, and it all started inside the mind of Brian Karras who spent over a decade trying to figure out how to get fully virtualized geometry into video games. The link to his Twitter account and to a couple of blog posts that he wrote in the early 2010s are in the description below. Go check them out. Unreal Engine 5 would not be the paradigm shifting engine that it is if it wasn't for this man.
For more information on Nanite's performance, memory usage, and console commands, go visit the official Nanite documentation. The link is in the description below. This was my first video in this series where I break down the Unreal Engine 5 documentation and put it in video format. Giving the video a like will tell the YouTube algorithm, hey, this is a good video, you should really recommend it to more people. I also think that you should really consider subscribing. I know you want to. You just have to scroll down a little bit and click that big red subscribe button. I'll be making more UE5 videos, more UE4 videos, and more videos on game development in general. If you want to learn how to develop games, this is the place to be. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Good I wonder if it would help the engagement scores if I left some of these bloopers in. I think it's worth a shot. Virtual textures are an orthon an orthonagal an orthogagon ortho virtual textures are an Unreal Engine feature with multiple when it comes to textures rather than meshes. So it's where am I even reading? I'm looking at the script and I can't even read or find my line.